scripture is inspired by God and can profitably be used for teaching, for refuting error, for guiding people's lives and teaching them to be holy. This is how the, the man who is dedicated to God becomes fully equipped and ready for any good work. Before God and before Christ Jesus, who is to be judge of the living and the dead, I put this duty to you. In the name of his appearing and of his kingdom, proclaim the message and, and welcome or unwelcome, insist on it. Refute falsehood, correct error, call to obedience, but do all with patience and with the intention of teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eye to the mountains, from where shall come my help? My help shall come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. May he never allow you to stumble. Let him sleep not, your guard. No, he sleeps not, nor slumbers. Israel's guard. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your guard and your shade. At your right side he stands. By day the sun, the sun shall not smite you, nor the moon in the night. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will guard you from evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your going and coming both now and forever. Our, Our help, help is, is in the name, name of, of the Lord, Lord who, who made, made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of your mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for, his call holds for us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your, your spirit. spirit. <clears throat> reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus told them a parable about the need to pray continually and not to lose heart. There was a judge in a certain town, he said, who had neither fear of God nor respect for anyone. In the same town, there was also a widow who kept, who kept on coming to him and saying, I want justice from you against my enemy. For a long time he refused, but at last he said to himself, even though I may have neither fear of God nor respect for any human being, I must give this widow her just rights since she keeps pestering me or she will come and slap me in the face. And the Lord said, you notice what the unjust judge had to say. Now, will God not see justice done to his elect if they keep calling on him day and night, though he still delays to help them? I promise you, he will see justice done to them and done speedily. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today is the 16th of October. And the 16th of October is the Feast of St. Gerard Magella. When we celebrate the Feast of a Saint, I think it's an opportunity for us to wonder what is a saint? We might be tempted to say 
a saint is someone who has died and gone to heaven. We've tended, I think, to view the saints in vertical terms. The saint is up there. We're down here. And we emphasize qualities in the saint which separates them from us. We talk about them being canonized, venerated, very holy, gone to heaven. All of which serves to make a saint very far removed from us, beyond our reach. They seem to have sailed through life with a glowing halo to light their way. It's completely, completely unreal. And what we're doing, of course, when we think and speak like that, is we're separating the saints from their humanity. We're simply dehumanizing them. Whereas the truth is that a saint is first and foremost a human being, just like me, just like you. They have all the limitations of human existence, which we have. Personality problems, failure, mistakes, errors of judgment, and they have their sins. So saints are not perfect, and they don't just become saints when they go to heaven. They're saints here and now, and if they're not saints here and now, they will never be saints after their death. So I'm saying that a saint is a real human being, just like us, living in the real world just like us. The real world that Gerard Magella inhabited, the real world where he became a saint, was on the Amalfi coast in southern Italy. Those of you who have been there will know how beautiful it is, but it's also a very, very poor and sparsely populated part of the world. It's one of the most impoverished parts of southern Italy. If you've been there, you know the land is barren, it's mountainous, and the people are mostly very poor. So, if we're to have some understanding of how Gerard Magella became a saint, and especially if we're going to hear what he might have to say to us today, the key, the key I think lies in his experience of poverty, poverty. He himself, was born into poverty. His family were poor. He was simple. He was illiterate. Had to leave school when he was 12 because his father died when he was 12. He was without learning. And on this day in 1756, he died the death of the poor. He died with tuberculosis at the age of 30. Gerard carried the poor in his heart. He's the saint of the farmers and the peasants, the saint who protects pregnant mothers but who also cared for animals. 
He isn't the kind of saint who says his prayers and adores God and does nothing else. He doesn't just sit in his monastery and wait for people to come to him looking for miracles. As we heard in this morning's gospel, prayer is never a substitute for action. So he wasn't just sitting in his monastery. Gerard is out in the fields. He's meeting the workers. He's talking to the helpers. And he's talking to them in their own rough and uneducated language. He was a saint, I say, of the poor. And when you look at his life, and especially when you look at the miracles he worked, you realize they were always miracles of compassion in response to the needs of poor people. Bread for the hungry, clothes for the cold and the naked. Water was made flow in dried up wells and rats were destroyed in fields of grain and barley. The poor were healed of sickness and disease. All his miracles showed his solidarity, his sensitivity to the poor. So if we look at him and ask about ourselves, we're certainly not poor like the people of the Amalfi Coast. We're not poor like St. Gerard was poor, because compared with them, we are rich and we are affluent. But look how easily our hearts are seduced, how easily we put our security in material possessions and in acquiring wealth. And Jared reminds us that taking responsibility for the poor, we reflected on this recently when we looked at the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. You can't be a disciple of Jesus without taking responsibility for the poor. So every one of us is called to be a saint. To be a saint in the real world that each one of us inhabits. And we are called to be a saint in our own distinctive, unique way. If I'm to be a saint, it won't be the same way as you would be a saint, because every one of us is unique and distinctive. So I've got to be the saint that God created me to be. So St. Gerard, I think this morning, would be saying to us on his feast day, he say, look at me, if I, with all my problems, living in the real world of southern Italy in the 18th century, if I can become a saint with God's help, then so can you. We'll say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the, seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, so we bring our needs and prayers before him. We pray for people who are looking for justice and for their just rights. May they not lose heart. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who cry to God day and night. May they find God's help in response to their cries. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for teachers and parents and children praying to receive the sacraments. May they have inspiration and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that people who have endured tragedies recently may be supported and helped. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our own needs for our adventurous obits and benefactors and for those whose names are in the Book of Intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for all who have died, especially the recently deceased. Pray for Father Sean Keeney, who was a member of the Plonard community, Sister Anique Leroy, Lawrence McManus, Danny Doherty, Sean Fox, Rosaline MacDonald, Muriel Forsyth, Betty Mulholland, Anne Murphy, Gerard Kennedy, Mike Danzig, Dennis Reed, Roberta Sue Davison, Jimmy McAllister, Fra Ward, Patricia O'Neill, and Joseph Mulvena. And we pray for those whose anniversary occurs at this time. May the Lord guard their going and coming, now and forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O Lord, you are our guard and our shade. Listen to these and all our prayers, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Over my soul, sweep over my soul. Sweet Spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete when I sit at your feet. Sweet Spirit, sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul. Sweet Spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete. When I sit at your feet, sweet spirit, sweet.